Caribbean treasure by Chioma Ochasi. The air is perfume sweet with nature's smell of mango season. Hot morning sunshine filters through the space between the abstract formation of branches spreading outwards, rewarding cool shelter for who dwell below. Today, the dweller is Martin, whose head almost seems to be up in the heart of Mr. Lewis mango tree. His hands cling around the burlap sack's edge, full of fresh red orangish grafted mangoes. The rustle of the dancing leaves fall on him from above. It gives him no reason to blink, no reason to allow that lustful, fleshy mango which teasingly hangs by its stem to leave his watering imagination. Above, the sturdy branches, alive with green leaves, hold Jacqueline, who is another boy, back from its last paradisiac treasure. His young, impatient flesh grates against the fruit tree's edge back as his fingertips brush the longing fruit. Not even Adam and Eve could understand the hungry want for such a forbidden taste. That was an excerpt from a short story called Caribbean Treasure, which was written by our next guest, 17-year-old Shioma Ochasi. Shioma's achievements include winning a top prize for the story at the Wadadli Pen Awards and being named Best Upcoming Actress from the Honey Bee Theater. Thanks for joining us, Shioma. Thank you. What inspired you to write that story called Caribbean Treasure? I think what inspired me the most to write Caribbean Treasure was um, was the things I loved in the Caribbean, in Antigua, the mangoes, the beaches, and also an element is that a memory with my mother is that we would be, you know, driving and we would see the boys, you know, selling mangoes, and my mom would always say, I wonder who tree they get all those mangoes from, because it's <laughs> probably not their tree. Mm -hmm. So I think that's really where I got, I just mixed all of those inspirations together to create Caribbean treasure. Okay, and how do you usually start writing a story? It starts with the imagination and the inspiration. Mm -hmm. I, unless I cannot see the vision, I can't write it. That's, that's really where it starts. <laughs> and do you think that your background influences the way you write, the things you write about? That's a good question. Yes and no, because... <laughs> <laughs> yes and no, that's a really good question, because um, I do look at the things around me. Mm -hmm. I see like okay I can take this experience and write it and sometimes it's just purely on my imagination and the spur of the moment kind of thing so okay so were there any challenges that you faced while writing Caribbean uh, treasure yes <laughs> yes um, there was a word limit and I crossed the word limit as the writer in me and I had to be like okay mm -hmm. where did I take out where did I take out and also I really had to envision um, the personas because the personas are um, these very tricks, um, tricksy village boys. I don't know any guys like that personally, so I had to think, okay, how would they act, what they would say, and that was a bit of a challenge, but I overcome it. Okay, uh -huh. and how do you balance acting and your schoolwork? And it sounds like you're a writer as well, so you do write, and I know mm -hmm. writing is very time consuming. Yes, it is. So how do you balance all of these aspects of your life? So I am trying my best to balance it all for real. <laughs> In the fourth form, I did. I was in a major role in the play called Whispers in Wallens. Yes. And I really had to force myself to not procrastinate. Like any moment I had at school or at home that I could just study, um, work on schoolwork, I had to just do it. I couldn't just be like, oh, let me, let me go on TikTok. No, I had to like, I, if I had to, I wanted to balance, you mm -hmm. know? And right now, I did put aside acting a bit to focus on, you know, CXC. Yeah. But I'm still trying to work out that element with writing and schoolwork because it is time consuming. It is. Okay. So how do you see yourself growing as an artist? Not only as an artist, because I know you said you put aside um, mm -hmm. acting. I'm assuming mm -hmm. you plan to pick it up again? Um, not as strongly with writing. I do have a love for um, acting and drama, but I do have a more passion for writing. But yes, mm -hmm. you're right. But so how do you see yourself growing in your artistry? Um, I see myself um, growing based on like writing more competitions, entering more workshops, 
and I do have a big project working right now, so I really feel that's going to advance me to where I want to be in the future. Oh, okay. Yes. And what books are you currently reading? I'm reading Holly Jackson's um, Mystery Investigation series. I have like the three books like on Amazon waiting to order them <laughs> yeah. after CXC, so yes, I love that book. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what advice would you give to kids who want to start writing their own stories? May not be for competition, but just for regular purposes. I feel like you, that is a good question. I'm trying to think about me when I was younger and when I started out. I feel like you need to have the imagination for it, I would say. Um, expose yourself out there, read books, because you can really take some tips from just reading a few books. Like, oh, I like how um, they wrote that. I like how they did that. And I think writing involves a lot of um, self-talk. Like, you really need to think. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we don't like to think, we just like to do. And just start thinking. Like, that, not in a rude way. I know, but I, understand, start, I understand. Like, really deeply thinking, okay, what do I want to say here? What do I want to write? Mm -hmm. And that's the flow, and that's the inspiration comes in with that. And I say, and don't compare yourself, because comparison really kills creativity. So that's my advice. I'll give that. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you for joining us, Shioma. Thank you so we much. We wish you continued success in your storytelling and on the stage. Thank you so much. We'll be back after this commercial break. Um.